Welcome, everybody, to the Keeping Score podcast from the Daily Interlake and Hagedone Sports Network. I'm Josh Amick. This week of the Range Riders recap, we'll be going over the great week they had against the Great Falls Voyagers, the reigning PBL Player of the Week in Mason Dennison, and some new faces yet again to the Range Riders Ball Club. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The Range Riders dropped the first game of the series when their 4-3 comeback attempt fell just a little bit short. Tyler Clayton started the game for the Range Riders, who was just recently added from Georgia Gwinnett last week. He pitched well for the first four innings, only allowing two base runners. But in the third inning, there was a 30-minute rain delay, and it seemed to kind of throw off his game. That wasn't the only X factor in the game, in my opinion. The Range Riders had the bases loaded in the bottom of the eighth and the bottom of the ninth, but they couldn't find that big hit to take the lead or to win the game. When Clayton returned from the rain delay, he retired the first three batters he saw in the fourth inning, but it was the fifth inning where he ran into some trouble and gave up all four runs, which would be the only runs that the Voyagers would score. And once again, the Range Riders couldn't find that clutch hit. But in the very next game of the series, the Range Riders were able to find that clutch hit and it ended up being my game of the week. After being held scoreless for the first eight innings, the Range Riders were down one to nothing going into the bottom half of the ninth. Andy Atwood led off the inning by being hit by a pitch and would later advance to third on a pitching error from the Voyagers. The Range Riders batters would be retired the next two outs and it seemed like things were looking a little bleak for the team. But then with the runner on third, things got really interesting. The Voyagers elected to intentionally walk Chad Castillo, which makes sense because Castillo is a great hitter and he was left-handed, so the matchup played to face the right-hander. But that right-hander was Mason Dennison, and he was the reigning PBL player of the week. In Dennison's at-bat, Voyagers pitcher Dane Renesa was called for a balk, and Atwood scored home the tying run to make it 1-1. Gavin Tonko also adv- advanced a second on the play, and here's what Dennison had to say about that balk call. I think it's something that he was doing the whole inning, and they finally became aware of it, and they called it. Yeah, I heard that they, uh, that seemed like the whole dugout yelled Bach as soon as he did it. Do you think that had any impact on it? I think they were yelling Bach for 20 straight pitches, and the umpire was not calling it, so then they switched it up and got the call right and worked out. A few pitches later, Dennison stepped up to the plate and delivered the big hit to win the game. The throw will come into the plate. The Range Riders win! The Range Riders win! Mason Dennison walks it off in the bottom of the ninth. A Bach and then a game-winning single. In game three of the series, the Range Riders bats wasted no time, putting up six runs in the first three innings, capped off by a home run by Chad Castillo. Freddie Gielmo and A.J. Skepkowski would also homer for the Voyagers, and it was an en route to an easy 9-1 victory. Starting pitcher Colin Kafka would strike out nine over five scoreless innings and lowered his ERA to 1.98. Friday's game was yet another dominant performance by Range Riders pitching as they allowed one run and a 4-1 victory. This time it was starter Trevor Baker who allowed one run over five innings. Nick Block and Christian Kirtley hit home two RBIs each, and that would be all they needed in the 4-1 win. Saturday was another great day for the Range Riders. We saw a tying performance by Brady Held, who started the game for the Range Riders and struck out 11 and route to seven strong innings, only allowing one run again. It was a Range Rider season high and tied two other Range Riders records for the most all time. Here's what Held had to say on his game-breaking performance. Knowing hitters, stuff like that, scouting report, but the biggest thing is just building our experience, trusting our stuff. It's getting middle middle of the season, so we're filling up the zone a lot more. That's the biggest thing. In that same game, Andy Atwood homered on the first pitch in the bottom of the first to start the scoring, and they would capitalize on some Voyagers' sloppy play to lead them to a 7-3 victory and their fourth straight win. Sunday, the Range Riders exploded for a 20-5 victory and welcome a familiar face back to the team in Gabe Howell, who was with the Range Riders last season, and led the team with a 418 on base percentage. After spending some time in the Savannah Bananas and the Lexington Legends of the Atlantic League, he returned to Glacier because he wanted to get back to playing competitive baseball. However, it was a season debut of Ty Pinner who stole the show as he was recently just activated off the IL and he homered in his first two at-bats. Here's what Pinner had to say on his performance. 
first two at bats of the season and you go yard both both times how's it feel to be back on the field uh, it feels great i mean uh, just to be able to compete with the guys is, is an awesome feeling and i was just trying to keep it simple out there and you know got lucky that those two left Chad Castillo also homered for the Range Riders, and Christian Curley added another to tie Castillo as the second most on the team, sitting only behind Mason Dennison's team leading eight home runs. That would be the Range Riders' fifth straight victory and a 5 1 series win over the Voyagers. That's it for the scoring recap. So, after a first game of the series, the Range Riders bounce back in a big way, winning the next five, and they'll need that momentum as they head to Missoula to take on the number one team in the Pioneer League the Missoula Paddleheads. So let's look ahead at what to expect in that series. Now the Range Riders only trail the Paddleheads by three games heading into this big six game series. There's a couple of key factors I think in this series that will determine the outcome of who is on top at the end of all this. The first main factor I believe is the Range Riders pitching. They're going against Adam Fogel who leads the Pioneer League in average and home runs but he's not the only threat you need to worry about. The entire Paddleheads team can hit. They're first in the league in hits, runs, doubles, RBIs, home runs, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage. Now, as I mentioned before, the Range Riders pitching has kind of found their groove. They have only allowed three earned runs off the last 27 innings pitched by their starters. But that was against Great Falls, who sit at the bottom of the Pioneer League, so that is to be taken into consideration when they're facing a team like the Missoula Paddleheads. They've also faced the Great Falls Voyagers more than any other team, so the Range Riders are familiar with them where they don't have that luxury facing Missoula. The other key factor in this series, I believe, is going to be the Range Riders' speed. They lead all of the Pioneer League with 88 stolen bases, and the second closest team to them is Billings with 55. Especially Atwood and Dennison, who are the top two among the Pioneer League, if those guys can get on base, create havoc on the base pads, that's another way for them to generate runs, which they'll need to do against this great Missoula Paddleheads lineup. You guys are now in the clear second seed, heading to the number one seed. How big of a series is this coming up? I mean, it's huge, but at the same time, we just can't really treat it like that. We've got to treat it like a regular series and uh, take it day by day. And be t uh, Attention to detail is key. You know, they're, they're a good staff. and. So just as long as we can execute our game, we, we should come out on top. All right. Another key factor to this series will be the new faces of the Range Riders. As I mentioned before, AJ Skepkowski, Tyler Clayton, they were added last week, along with Nick Gore, a catcher from New Mexico State. But this week, they welcomed two more new faces in Gabe Howell and Ty Penner. Ty Penner already made an impact in his debut, and hopefully he can keep that going for the team in this big series. Mason Dennison was also named as a PBL Player of the Week where he hit 536 with four home runs and 11 RBIs. He cooled off a little bit in this week against Great Falls, but if he can return to that form or something similar to it, it should make for a very compelling series against the top two teams in the Pioneer League. That's all I have this week for the Range Riders recap. They begin that big six game series against Missoula on Tuesday before they return home next week at Glacier Bank Park to take on yet again the Great Falls Voyagers. Hopefully this time in first place. Thank you for joining me and listening to the Keeping Score podcast from Daily Interlake and Hagadone Sports Network. I'm Josh Amick and until next time, take care.